So once again, I want to involve you in the thinking process of how this works, and it'll be very intuitive and very simple for you to comprehend and understand. Now in our previous video, we did set up the MySQL database. Now understand something very important. The database has been set up, but the database contains no information because we haven't done that yet. We're gonna do that next. Now again, if you're watching this on Udemy, you can take a note on the top right-hand corner, and you YouTubers, you're gonna to have to get out a pen and paper or email yourself, but that's why you wanna watch this on udemy.com. And again, I have a series of free courses on udemy.com, and I'll put a link at the bottom of this video. Now, if you're watching this on udemy.com in the free section, well, that's redundant now, isn't it? But for YouTubers, it's simply udemy.com forward slash think, learn, earn, because that's my battle cry. My battle cry is I want to involve you in the thinking process so you can earn and learn and earn more money. Did I say that twice? Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to another free part of cPanel called PHP My Admin. And what this is going to do is write the code to create the tables for you. Okay. Now, I'm going to click that. Now, back in the day, of course, we had to learn how to write these tables from scratch. Of course, before there was a little great WYSIWYG program like PHP My Admin, which is part of cPanel. Now, pay close attention to my concepts here because it's really going to help you. Here's how a database works. A website could basically have many databases, although that's not a typical thing. So as an example, a database can contain, well, database has to contain tables because otherwise I have no content. So here is the structure of a database for PHP My Admin using MySQL. And again, this is a Linux, Unix-based server environment. Okay, so database contains tables. So an example of a table would be a client table, a US state or country table, a shipping table. Okay, so database contains tables. Tables basically create fields, columns, first name, last name, how'd you hear about us, when's your birthday, what's your mother's maiden name, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the structure is database tables, tables, field names, columns, and they in turn create records. So we're gonna basically create a record for the database of the database a table called admin. Because the first, the first table you should create in your database is an admin table, therefore we can pass or protect our site. And here's how we're gonna do this. So here's our two choices. This is our basic schema database that comes with when you install a, a when basically this was there by default. So, so pay no attention to that. So based on these choices here, Basically, we have no tables set up. So I'm gonna click this database. Okay, so again, software simply comes down to choices, choices. Based on these choices, I wanna create a new table. Okay, so what are we gonna call this table? Now, extremely crystal clear. You cannot put hyphens in the name of your table. You can put underscores, which I highly suggest you do, but you cannot put hyphens. That's not how the PHP MySQL works. So we're simply gonna call this admin underscore table, admin table, okay? So admin table underscore, actually, uh, what I'm gonna do is just keep it, I'm gonna basically follow the rules, uh, the strict rules of doing intelligent database design. We're gonna say admin TBL. And that's just a suffix that is used across the board for professionally doing MISQL database. Now it's gonna say, how many columns or field names do you wanna have? Well, let's think about this. It's a good habit to get into when creating a database to follow this exact structure that I'm going to share with you. I always put in the, of course, the ID of the database, of the table, of the record. Uh, maybe the date was created, which is good to know. This way I can track. So in this particular case, we do something very simple. It's going to be, it's going to be in this order. It's going to be the ID. It's going to be the uh, date it was created the person's first name, the person's last name, the person's email, the person's password. And what I always do is I always put an active field. Now here's the advantage of that, and I suggest you do the same thing. If you're in the business of selling, oh, I don't know, uh, snowmobiles and bathing suits, well, you're not selling snowmobiles in the middle of the winter. You're not selling bathing suits in, I'm sorry, you are selling, <laughs> there. <laughs> you're not selling bathing suits in the middle of the winter, and you're not selling snowmobiles in the middle of the summer. But rather than actually physically delete that information from your store, you can just have a field called active and choose to turn it on or off. Active equals yes, 
octave equals no. Of course, you can use zero and one values as well, but we're just going to keep this simple. So based on what I just explained to you, we're going to build seven columns and we're going to come down here and hit go. Simple, simple, simple. My job is to keep this simple. Now, so you can see more of the screen at the same time. I'm simply going to command minus. Command minus zooms out, of course, on Windows, it'd be control minus. So here's what we're going to do. Here's the name of our table. Then we're going to basically define the types of fields that we have. So the first, the first field is going to be basically called admin underscore ID. Okay, and this is going to be a small integer. And again, personal technique here, small integer supports six digits, which means I could have one less than a million people in my PHP inside my MySQL database. And that's totally fine for me. And if I have a million people, I think I'm doing well. Well, actually one less than a million people. So here's what we need to do. We're gonna go across the board and just dot the I and cross the T. This needs to be set as a primary key. So very important to take a note on this. If you forget to do this, you're going to create problems for yourself. Every time you make a new table, the first column should be set to a primary key. So small integer primary key in AI. This does not stand for artificial intelligence. This stands for auto increment. You definitely want to have that checked because now the database will build your record. Record one, record two, record three, record four. If you don't do that, then you're going to have to physically give a record ID, which gets really, really tedious. So do yourself a favor. The first field for any table should be primary key auto increment. Then we're going to come down here and just put something like T underscore date, which stands for today's date. And we're going to do something you haven't seen before, unless you've watched my videos. We're going to make this a timestamp. So we're going to let the database put in the correct time and the date. And we're going to pick based on these choices, current timestamp. Okay. Next, we're going to put the person's first name. Now, we're not going to put the person's first name. These are defining the field names. So first is going to be something called variable characters, var chart. I can just do that by typing letter V. Now, anytime you have a variable character, you must define its length. So if you a, have a client from, say, an Eastern European country where they maybe have a long hyphenated word name, we're going to give them up to 45 characters. And we're going to do the same thing for the last name. So last, var car, variable characters, and 45. Now, this next step is very important to pay attention to. This next field is going to be the person's email address. Now, important step here. Back in the old days, people used to have to put in their username and their password and their email address. Well, people have too many things to remember in life. So we're just going to basically make their email address be their username. It's really going to be that simple. So that's also going to be variable characters, which you can do by hitting the letter V. This also needs a length. Now, let's say they have an old email account from uh, Earthlink back in the day. So we're going to give them up to 55 characters. Now, here's the part you want to pay attention to. I do not want anyone with the same exact email address in my database more than once. Otherwise, the database will get very confused. So based on these choices, we're going to make the email address be unique which means the database will not allow somebody with the same email address. And this happens quite a bit. A person logs onto your site and they register for a free subscription and they forgot that they signed in six months ago and they go to sign in again. You can now say, hey, you already exist. If you forgot your password, we'll send you a password you know, reminder, et cetera, et cetera. Next, of course, we're gonna type in password and that will be variable characters as well. And we'll give them up to uh, I don't know, let's give them up to 20 characters that they can basically have a password. Now, that's not going to be unique. Every, the only thing here that's going to be unique is their email address. And again, this last step is my personal, personal preference. And I do this with every single table. It lets me em overemphasize it. Every single table. And here's the simple way to do it. Variable characters. This is either going to say yes or no. That's three characters. My site, my definition as defined is going to say yes. So what this is going to do for me is the database, when it builds a new record, is automatically going to make auto increment this. It's automatically going to put in today's date and time, and it's automatically going to put in active equals yes. Pretty cool. So we're going to go down here to save this, and there it's going to go and write the code for the table, and your table is now set. So in our next video, I will share with you how to populate that table with your admin login information 
and get started with that. So I just want to share with you very simple, straightforward techniques, 95% of building a proper database and using Dreamweaver to basically build the logic comes down to exactly that, logical step-by-step -step techniques. So watch my next video and learn something. Thank you.